because then the portfolio journey is oftentimes not over, but kind of continuing instead. And so I'd like to introduce um, my three co-presenters who don't work for Catalyst like I am, um, but work for White and Matadi HB up here in Auckland. And that is to my right, uh, Janine Critic. She is the PDRP nurse consultant, really a vital member of the team because she has all the content knowledge and she is a nurse herself. I think the only one here the entire conference. Um, and then to my left is Miriam Laidlaw and um, her colleague Tabitha Parker. And they are both instructional designers at YIT Manta DHB. And many of you know them from various model modes and also Unitech, for example, because they've been in the learning community and as, as instructional designers in New Zealand for many, many years. And I'm joining from Wellington, work for Catalyst, and I'm, I'm the Mahara Project Lead. So what we are going to do today is really tell you the story of how Wyatt and Mata DHB has evolved over the years on their portfolio journey. And of course, because we are at a technology conference, we are going to focus on the e-portfolio aspect of that. But of course, the e-portfolios did not just occur out of thin air, but had a story from the past, and Janine will tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I get the chance to just talk a little bit about the background of where we actually come from. So there is a Health Practitioners Competency Assurance Act, which was set up in 2003, and that's set to make sure that Nursing Council um, requires people to be competent and fit to practice for the public safety. And it's really important that the safety of our public who are in receiving our services can feel that the people looking after them are fit to practice and competent. That's across all professional bodies. Right back in the 1980s was when Dr Jocelyn Peach, who is actually our Director of Nursing for Waitamata DHB, started off looking at the recognition of practice and competence. And it was all based on a framework which was put out by Patricia Benner from novice to expert. In the early 1990s, we went into looking at clinical pathways. So looking at enabling nurses to actually have a pathway to move beyond, I suppose, just being that nurse. And then in 2004, Nursing Council came on board and said, we need to look at a continuing competence framework and how do we make sure that the nurses are fit to practice and competent? And that's where they then supported the professional development and recognition programs within the DHBs and other organisations. Um, there's pretty much two parts to a portfolio. There's structure and direction, which is looking at revalidating um, the competence of people and the education that is provided and that they attend. But there's also something that is less formally looked at, but it's how nurses exhibit the art of nursing. Because in with the portfolios that they put together of evidence, there is an element of heart and art that goes along with the nursing profession. Oh, this is me too, sorry. Um, so, um, throughout New Zealand, wherever there are professional development programs, um, most, some are jumping into the e-space, but there are still a number of portfolios that are put together in a paper format that go in a folder. Um, and this is the front cupboard of our cupboard that sits at Waitamata at the moment. Um, this is an idea of 
a small idea of the portfolios that come in. You can see the variety of sizes, um, and in there is the evidence of competence and beyond, but that art of nursing as well. Okay, so it was time for a change. So, um, it doesn't work. <laughs> the, um, the director of nursing said, enough's enough. And um, in 2011, she said it's time for us to look at e portfolios. No, we weren't there in 2011. But seven years of conversations about moving to e portfolios happened. And then we arrived and we had no more conversations. Let's just do it. So in December of 2017, we um, finally made a decision about which portfolio platform we were going with. Um, for us it was an easy decision to make because we had prior experience with it um, and there were various things around that including the fact that we wouldn't have to then go with another vendor because we were already with a specific vendor, Catalyst, for our learning management system. Sorry? And the other DHBs. And the other DHBs. <laughs> um, which led to um, a scoping um, and then led to very quickly us um, pushing the boat out with a pilot group. And in November of, that, of the following year, so less than a year later, we had our very first portfolio submissions online with our pilot group. Um, we turned those round very quickly because we needed to get feedback and we needed to get changes out so that we could evaluate those. And in March of 2019, we rolled it out to the whole of the nursing in Waitamata DHB, which involved a lot of training. And um, we trained more than a thousand nurses. Yeah, that's not on the slide though. <laughs> <laughs> it involved a lot of training, but it meant that within the space of a year, we suddenly had all of our nurses on doing the portfolios and learning how to do them online. And excitingly, um, December last year, we got the approval to um, start phase two of our development, which meant that all the things that we um, put off in the first bit, we get to actually fix and develop further and improve for the second lot. And so Waitamata DHB opted to not go with a platform that only Waitamata can use, but use uh, Kopaki Tiaki Hora, which is a platform that we set up for all the DHBs and all healthcare providers in New Zealand. Because the advantage there is that um, Mahala is not just an e-portfolio platform where individual portfolios can be created, but there is also social learning possible through groups, making it possible to then also connect nurses or other healthcare providers from different organizations to each other without needing to have to worry about going to public places when they need to um, discuss things confidentially and also everybody has access to the platform then of course the more providers go online with it. And um, that model has already worked really well for Wild Mata and other DHBs here in particular in the North Island uh, through Coaba Learn, which is an LMS that is being used across many DHBs. So they are already used to the concept of sharing a platform and being together and sharing also resources. And um, this site is available to all healthcare providers in New Zealand, um, making it possible for people to simply get on board. And it's kind of a software as a service offering. And we'll take a very brief look at what the template looks like for the portfolios. And please keep in mind it is for nurses and there's still a lot of work to do, in particular around, well, how can we incorporate video and images of patients. So confidentiality, patient privacy is very important and that's why the majority of the portfolios at the moment are very much text-based. So we implemented a few changes from the base of Mahara and one of those is page instructions which to us just seemed like a good idea because it meant that we weren't putting instructions into a text block on the page and then expecting 
our nurses to delete those text blocks because we know that that doesn't happen most of the time. So instead, there's page instructions on every page and they actually just show up as a tiny little link that when you click on it, it slides out the page instructions and when you click on it again, it slides them away. And we thought that was just much tidier and also then um, people aren't deleting the instructions before they're done with them. And then our domain pages. So the domains are the competency framework as per the nursing council requirements. And each of these pages is um, split up into their domains and down one side we have the nurse writing their self-assessment of their practice and down the other side we have them, uh, the peer, their colleagues, writing their peer assessment. Um, so this is an improvement over the previous system where the assessors would have to flick between the nurse's self-assessment and the peer's assessment in a paper portfolio setting and constantly have to look forwards and backwards. Here it's side by side, down the page, making it easier for the assessors and the managers to read the nurse's and the peer's self-assessment of that nurse's practice. And then at the top, there is the ability for the nurse to sign off the page as complete. So once all of the self and peer assessment is done, they sign it off as complete. And the manager to then verify that they have also seen the page and that it looks complete. And those sign off blocks are at the top of every single page in the portfolio. And so the portfolio that you have seen uh, was based on a template that was developed, which is another benefit uh, to the nurses because they don't sit in front of a blank piece of paper and need to figure out what they need to do, but it's right there on the screen for them. And of course, if we envisage all of that for the school level or university level, you can put your images, video, and, and other interactive elements and uh, multimedia stories and therefore get a portfolio that might have more visuals in there. But all of that, talking about technology and templates and so on, does not distract and cannot distract from the fact that it wouldn't have been possible without the team. Um, because we, and we've heard that in the previous presentation as well, there's a lot of PD involved, there's a lot of upfront work involved to really create a system that then is very easy to use. And it is important that faculty, staff, and whoever is involved in the initiative gets the time to work on that, have that upfront work, and then also the time to maintain it and to evolve it. And I mean, right now we're in the second year of it, so there have been changes. The instructions have been revised, um, the, the LMS course, there are changes being made, things are being adopted, further development is made in order to support the workflows more, and all of that is necessary. We, and we can't stress enough how much, or, or the importance of the staff training and also having instructional designers like Tabitha and Miriam on board who can answer questions very quickly and support everybody in the process. So, you've already heard some of these ones, but um, where you saw the instructions in the page, uh, that's an, an included in called code now, so if you are using the Hara, you'll see these features and then you update. Um, so we wanted those instructions to be where they need them, at the time they need them. Most hospital resources are on an, um, an intranet, only accessible internally, and our nurses would go home looking for a quite uninterrupted space to work on their portfolio and didn't have access to the right instructions anymore. So we're having uh, instructions in the page that is relevant to the level of practice that they're applying for. We created videos that help step them through, so those that are out in the community and find it difficult to come to face-to-face -to -face training can watch videos that walk them through each step. Um, and uh, th there's also our user guides um, online, so if they lose their copy from the training, they can, they can get another copy. Lots and lots of screenshots, really help them give them direction. Um, we do have 50-minute training sessions. In that time, we, we're often addressing their lack of knowledge around how they use their LMS as well. So it's first remembering how to log into the, you know, the, the level of knowledge is often your, your login is your email address. Do you know your email address? Do you know that it's at white in the tar? That's how you spell W-A-I. That is where we start, okay? So we offer a training of an hour, 
But we also have people who come into that training session having already built their portfolio, having used the user guide or used the instructions on the pages and able to come and just, I've just done my checking, I haven't missed something. So, so it, is, it is quite diverse. Um, we do offer one-on-one uh, -on -one support for some of our staff. It doesn't often actually occur. Um, and we have a, an email address that they can email and ask for help. Um, we have integrated it with the LMS um, and we're, we're further integrating it with the LMS because it's a familiar environment um, and we don't want extra passwords and things like that. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible and as accessible as possible for them where they want to do their work. Since we launched, we have done various different evaluations um, on the staff, um, get gathering feedback. We have trained, uh, we've had a high level of engagement with the training and with the materials online, which means we have trained around 3,000 of our nurses, and that's just past the halfway mark in training all the nurses and managers. Given we usually receive approximately 800 portfolios in a year, we've actually trained in the year that we've been up and running more nurses than actually need to submit their portfolios. So they have engaged with it. Um, the training is voluntary. They don't have to come to it. Um, but completing a portfolio is not, it is compulsory. So um, in the initial year, um, our, we did still accept paper and electronic portfolios because creating a paper portfolio is a sometimes months long process. And for people who had started that process, it would have been unfair to tell, tell them, no, all of that has gone to waste, you now have to do it um, electronically. However, since um, the start of this year, we have said no more paper portfolios, you've had a year to prepare, um, and that's why I, we think the uptake has been so high so early on, because people are trying to prepare for not paper portfolios anymore. So the portfolio part is, is one part of our professional development recognition program. So um, when we were having paper portfolios, what we saw was people talking about assessment. I'm putting together my portfolio for my assessment. I'm having a conversation with my charge nurse about getting my portfolio in and finding evidence to support what I've done back there. And there was never really any time to talk about development. So part of this shift was trying to remove all the clutter around assessment and reduce our requirements around assessment and duplication of the same information being repeated throughout the portfolio. And make those conversations about um, what are your goals, where do you want to go, how do I help you as your manager to to grow and develop and address the quite frankly scary problem of we have a lot of nurses who are beginners and a lot of nurses who are older. The average age of a nurse is 47 in, in the uh, main hospital that we work in. So we need to address that and help those conversations shift to development. So we went from this minimal engagement, oh it takes ages, we're always doing things about the past, it takes so long, to suddenly I'm having conversations about what I can do, or how I can grow, how you'll support me. So it's quite a special place to be right now. We had procrastination. My portfolio was due last month, so I really need your help right now because it's overdue and it might get audited by the council and a lot of overdue portfolios, trying to get out of doing it until the last minute. Now, we have people turning up for training when they're not due until 2021. A portfolio is valid for three years. We have people coming now and starting to document their uh, professional development attendance. They're starting to write their reflections in advance. They're preparing. They're trying to have those conversations earlier. So it's pretty exciting for us. Um, it was really important that we um, looked at our feedback, especially from the pilot piece, because we need to know that what we're putting in place is um, going ahead and it's working. So our key stakeholders, we've got some just um, sort of quotes up here from some of the key stakeholders. The, probably the most important key stakeholder in this whole um, space is the nurse. Um, we need to make this a user-friendly process, and we have seen that um, greater engagement in the process, but we need to continue to work alongside them um, to support them as we um, 
as we move forward in this advancement. Um, nurse educators play a big role in this process. They um, work alongside nurses to give them the guidance and the understanding of how to put a portfolio together, what kind of evidence are assessors looking for, what level of depth of information of evidence. And so um, our educators are finding that the easier to be the portfolios are easier to be shared with them so they can view that information. And um, that they're starting to see nurses, as Tabitha had said, looking at their growth and development rather than looking at this is an assessment and I need to show an audit process right here and now, but that audit doesn't really mean anything. There's really got, not going to be any further process in what I'm doing. So it's really great to see the movement of people coming together and sharing that information. Our managers um, absolutely are finding that the process of our appraisal process is starting to become more transparent. Um, they're able to acknowledge where people are at and they're starting to have that conversation about growth and development as well. Our assessors, because at the very end of this, nurse puts their portfolio in and they um, it gets marked by an approved assessor. And our assessors are finding that what the managers are providing in information is more insightful. So it's actually got some, I suppose, guts to it. And um, is there another one? Is that it? <laughs> um, and just you yeah, thought there was. And just you saw those portfolios in that cupboard, the folders. Our assessors have to come down and take them in a bag or under their arm and walk to wherever they're going. Where now um, they can contact us, we can send pretty much straight away, they can say, I've got two hours spare, could you send me a portfolio? They can mark it right there and then. And also our administrator isn't having to drive around in a car any longer, dropping them off to our isolated um, areas as well. So this is that same cupboard that you saw at the start this week. Um, and part of it is we're not accepting paper portfolios anymore, but that cupboard was full of a backlog of paper portfolios because they were so much more difficult to actually mark. Um, so as well as the fact that we're not accepting new ones, we're getting rid of that backlog of paper portfolios and then the new portfolios that are coming in, the, the feedback from the assessors is that they're so much faster and easier to actually assess because the information is so much easier to find because it's all in the same order, all in the same place and all grouped together in the right way. So that is our cover right now. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to tell you about some of the things we'd like to do next because there's always more. Um, so we're continuously looking at how we improve our user experience. So some of the things that we're doing in that space, uh, we saw a sign off and verify. We wanted um, to give that as, as our first step in a process that will later become a block and we can finally develop that block that will show um, what pages have I signed off, where was I up to, because they're often interrupted, so um, I can look at a list of my pages and see, oh, it's only domain three I've got left, I can go straight there. And for a manager, being able to look at all those pages and seeing where the, where the nurse is up to, what pages they've signed off, and which pages they've verified, that should be a whole lot clearer. Uh, we are taking our course completions from the LMS, so we're integrating closer together, and being able to say, I've done all this e-learning, uh, and I should have it automatically appear in my portfolio. Um, adding, to, adding to that, um, in our LMS to support those, we're starting to record our face-to-face -face training. So we're seeing more of our educators blending what they were doing, where they used to say, you come to a study day and you'll be here from this time to this time. They're now saying, well, what could I do as an e-learning module first, and then only have them off the floor for um, half a day, or what could I do differently? So we're starting to record more of that in our LMS, so that when working together really helps with that. We're also building a reporting function. So um, we use Tortora and uh, it does have reports, but we uh, want the reports to start looking inside the activities. We're using the assignment function for them to submit. So we wanted to use some of the um, rubrics and things like that, but then know who's had this portfolio? How long does it take them to mark? How many portfolios are they sitting on? Which departments, which service areas are our nurses coming from and, and submitting at what levels? And how do we then target how we give support to those departments to help them grow in the areas that they need to grow? 
So we're going to have a lot better data in the future, which is pretty exciting. Is there any other features I should talk about? Yeah, that's the main ones. <laughs> yeah, so, so what you hopefully have seen um, over the course of the presentation is that it is a very intense program. Lots and lots of people are involved at the DHB besides the three here right next to me. And that a lot of nurses are being tra trained, but not just trained, but also supported throughout the entire portfolio process. And you've also heard that we are connecting to a learning management system, and that I find is also very important these days, that we are not trying to build all, this off, um, all the features in one tool and replicating lots of things, but rather integrating systems, using the technology available or built on top of that technology in order to make the best use of what we have, and therefore have that integrated learning environment sitting up online. If you'd like to hear more about it and uh, get in touch, here are our contact details. We will be making the slides available after this presentation so that you can view them online and um, can also revisit the recording. And um, if you'd like to read some of the resources later on, um, they also have the links directly there. If you have any questions, I'm not sure if Mark will allow us a couple of minutes or if we are going to take that out to 118. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There is a question or two. I'm sure we've got time. Otherwise, um, I was just thinking about the, the maybe the older nurses that took up this, and maybe sorry, I'll use the microphone. The older nurses that took up the uh, doing their portfolios. How did they um, adapt to the technology? Uh, and this way of doing it. I know that you, you did videos for them and you did one-on-ones, but did they take a bit longer to train, or did yeah, they forget yeah, doing the support? Um, I wouldn't always look at age as the determinant. No. Um, the fastest person I've seen type in all of the people that I've uh, had come in, and she just went click, 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 was an enrolled nurse who was, I would have thought, over the retirement age, um, and she just went, oh yeah, no, I'm fine. And she raced through the training and was amazing. Yeah. And then we have 20 year olds who are like, I don't know how to use my phone, I don't know how to use this computer, and I'm in this because I like to do stuff that's more hands on and I don't want to touch the computer. So um, overall though, I'd say we have a fairly high level of engagement mm -hmm. and um, that most people are coping. We get the odd one. Um, and one of the things that we've had to do when we've noticed that happening is look at what's happening for them and deal with their fear. Uh, because the moment you start saying, um, just come on, just come on, just, just try it, that's not helpful. Um, and we've found that if you're in a room with, so we train five to eight people at a time generally, um, because our training rooms are that big. Um, if you get, look at the other participants and try and get one to yeah. change the tone, they're like, oh, I, can, I can do this. So we can turn it, turn it around by getting them to look at the peers and to work out who else can support them. This is only one part of, um, I suppose, technology within the DHB. So um, Waitemata DHB has been really fast moving in other things like e-prescribing and um, e-clinical notes. And so a lot of our staff, a lot of our nurses are having to get on board now um, with the computer systems. Um, they use them every day now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's another another piece to it really yeah all right thank you very much thank morning you. tea should thank be available <laughs> thank you